I am excited to share with you the recently published long-term safety and effectiveness data based on the five-year follow-up of bronchothermoplasty treated subjects from the AIR-2 trial. These data represent new information that extends our knowledge about the layer bronchothermoplasty system and helps address some of the long-term safety and effectiveness questions that people have raised. My name is Narendra Shargil. I'm the Vice President of Clinical Strategy and Medical Affairs for the Pulmonary Division at Boston Scientific. Before we look at the data, it is helpful to briefly review the design of the AIR-2 trial, including the five-year extension study. The AIR-2 trial was a double-blind, sham-controlled clinical study. Patients with severe persistent asthma who gave consent to be in the study and met all the inclusion-exclusion criteria underwent an extensive baseline assessment, including various questionnaires on their overall asthma status and history of asthma in the prior year. They were then randomized into either the BT group or the sham control group. The three BT or sham procedures were performed by an unblinded team, and after the procedures, the patients were evaluated for the first year by a blinded assessment team. The objective of the pivotal AIR-2 trial was to establish safety and effectiveness compared with the sham control. The primary endpoint at the end of the first year was the asthma-related quality of life and we had to demonstrate that BT was superior to the sham control group with regards to the improvements in the AQLQ score. After the 12-month evaluation, the control subjects, the sham control subjects were exited from the study and only the BT treated patients were followed out to an, for another four years in the AIR-2 extension study. The purpose here was to evaluate safety and durability of the effectiveness seen at one year. To assess durability, we selected severe exacerbations as the primary endpoint, as this is a measure that can be easily quantified. This was accomplished by comparing the proportion of BT-treated patients with severe exacerbations at each of years 2, 3, 4, and 5, compared with the proportion of BT-treated patients with severe exacerbations at year 1. As a reminder, the definition of severe exacerbation was worsening of asthma symptoms that required treatment with systemic corticosteroids. The Asthma Intervention Research 2 trial, or the AIR-2 trial, is a landmark asthma study as it was the largest sham controlled study ever conducted to evaluate a new device for use in severe asthma. The AIR-2 trial was a multi-center, randomized, double-blind, sham controlled clinical study. The study population included patients with severe persistent asthma who were on high doses of inhaled corticosteroids and long-acting beta agonists. Patients underwent an extensive baseline assessment, including various questionnaires on their overall asthma status and history of asthma in the prior year to assess their symptoms and inclusion in the study. They were then randomized two to one into either the BT group or the sham control group. The patients were blinded to whether they were in the BT treatment group or sham group. All patients underwent three bronchoscopy procedures, but RF energy was not delivered to the sham group. The three bronchoscopy procedures in both the BT and sham patients were performed by an unblinded team, and after the procedures, the patients were evaluated for the first year by a blinded assessment team. The objective of the pivotal AIR-2 trial was to establish safety and effectiveness compared with the sham control group. The primary endpoint was asthma-related quality of life, which was to demonstrate that BT was superior to the sham control group with regards to improvement in AQLQ score at the end of one year follow-up. Additional secondary endpoints evaluated included severe exacerbations, emergency room visits, and days lost from work, school, and other daily activities due to asthma symptoms. Follow-up in the AIR-2 trial was up to one year. At one year follow-up, BT-treated group demonstrated positive clinical outcomes compared to the sham control group. BT patients had an improved asthma-related quality of life as measured by improvement in their AQLQ score versus the sham group. 79% of BT-treated patients had a clinically meaningful improvement of greater than, equal to or greater than 0.5 in their AQLQ score compared to 64% in the sham control group. Other clinical benefits of BT treatment compared to sham included an 84% reduction in emergency room visits for respiratory symptoms, 
a 32% decrease in severe exacerbations requiring systemic corticosteroids, and 66% less days lost from work, school, and other daily activities due to asthma. In terms of clinical and procedure safety, there were no device-related deaths or major adverse events in the AIR-2 trial, including no cases of pneumothorax, airway stenosis, or focal narrowing. The most common adverse event in the BT group was a temporary worsening of respiratory-related symptoms immediately after the procedure. These events typically occurred within one day of the BT procedure and resolved within a week with standard care. However, after the initial six-week treatment period, patients treated with BT experienced fewer respiratory adverse events, fewer hospitalizations, and fewer ER visits in the long term. This clinical safety at one ear was demonstrated across 850 bronchoscopy pr procedures performed in patients with severe asthma. Post FDA approval, the AIR-2 trial five-year extension study was conducted to evaluate the sustained effectiveness of bronchothomoplasty beyond one year and the safety of BT out to five years in the BT-treated patients from the AIR-2 trial. To investigate the long-term safety and durability of the treatment effect of BT with the Allaire system that was demonstrated in the first year, it was determined that a non-inferiority test for the percentage of BT-treated patients experiencing severe exacerbations at each of years 2, 3, 4, and 5 compared with the percentage of BT-treated patients with severe exacerbations at year 1 would demonstrate durability. The primary endpoint was the percent of patients experiencing severe exacerbations during subsequent 12-month periods out to five years in order to determine whether the improvement in severe exacerbations seen at one year persisted to five years. The non-inferiority margin was established as the upper 95% confidence limit of the differences in proportions in each year minus year one to be less than 20%. Secondary endpoints included emergency room visits for respiratory symptoms, hospitalizations for respiratory symptoms, respiratory adverse events, and lung function. This slide shows the number of patients completing follow-up in each of the years out to year five. In a long-term study of this duration, the patient retention rate in the AIR-2 trial and extension study was remarkably high at greater than 85%. Of the 181 patients who enrolled in the extension study, 162 patients completed the evaluation at year five, representing a retention rate of 89.5%. From the evaluation at two years through the evaluation at five years, only three patients were lost to follow up. There were three patients who missed the four year evaluation but remained in the study and completed the five year evaluation. This slide shows the results for the primary endpoint in the AIR-2 extension study. The primary endpoint was met. Compared with the percentage of BT patients with severe exacerbations at year one, the percentage of BT patients experiencing severe exacerbations at each of years two, three, four, and five met the established non-inferiority margin as shown by the horizontal line from year one to year five. This confirms that the effectiveness we saw with BT at one year persists out to at least five years. The data at year one following BT had shown a 32% reduction in severe exacerbations in the BT group compared to the sham group. This slide shows that this reduction was maintained out to five years. On the left-hand side, you see the graph of the proportion of patients having severe exacerbations. And on the right-hand side, the graph shows the rate of severe exacerbations as events per subject per year. As seen in these two graphs, the reduction in percent of patients with severe exacerbations requiring systemic corticosteroids, as well as the severe exacerbation event rates were maintained out to at least five years. Additionally, although not prospectively defined in the AIR-2 extension study, it is interesting to note that the average decrease in severe exacerbations relative to baseline at one year prior to BT treatment. Shown on the graph on the left, the percent of patients experiencing severe exacerbations over five years compared to the one year prior to BT treatment 
representing a 44% average decrease. On the graph on the right, the severe exacerbation event rates over five years compared to the one year prior to BT treatment represent a 48% average decrease. This graph shows that the reduction in emergency room visits was also maintained out to five years. Again, on the left hand side is the graph showing the proportion of patients experiencing an emergency room visit for respiratory symptoms. And on the right hand side, the event rate, that is the number of emergency room visits per subject per year. The data at one year following bronchial thermoplasty had shown an 84% reduction in emergency room visit rates in both the B in the BT group compared to the sham group. As seen in these two graphs, the reduction in both the percentage of patients experiencing emergency room visits as well as the emergency room visit event rates was maintained out to at least five years. Additionally, although not prospectively defined in the air to extension study, it is interesting to note the large average decreases in emergency room visits relative to baseline at one year prior to BT treatment. Shown on the graph on the left, the percent of patients experiencing emergency room visits over five years compared to the one year prior to BT treatment represented a 78% average decrease. On the graph on the right, the emergency room visit event rates over five years compared to the one year prior to BT treatment represented an 88% average decrease. Long-term safety of BT was demonstrated with no increase in hospitalizations, asthma symptoms, or respiratory adverse events over the five years. Review of high-resolution CT scans showed that no structural changes in the airways that were clinically significant were due to BT at five years. There was no evidence of an increase in bronchiectasis or evidence of bronchiolitis obliterans or pulmonary emphysema. At five years, there was also no clinically significant deterioration in FEV1 as seen on the next slide. This slide shows the pre and post bronchodilator FEV1 at each of the time periods starting at baseline. From baseline out to five years, there was no change in the pre bronchodilator FEV1. The post bronchodilator FEV1 remained higher than the pre bronchodilator FEV1 at all times. The absolute change between the pre-bronchodilator and post-bronchodilator percent predicted FE1 was 8.2% at baseline and 5.9% at 5 years. These results from the long-term follow-up of BT treated patients uh, in the AIR2 trial clearly establish the safety and effectiveness of BT out to at least 5 years. This is demonstrated by the reduction in severe asthma exacerbations requiring systemic corticosteroids seen at one year was maintained out to five years, as well as the reduction in emergency room visits for respiratory symptoms seen at one year was similarly maintained out to five years. Importantly, with clinical effectiveness, the long-term safety of BT was also shown to be maintained out to five years. In a sub-analysis of the study data, Proctal thermoplasty was shown to have similar effectiveness in both allergic and non-allergic patients, shown here as blue bars for the allergic and red bars for the non-allergic patients. At baseline, 55% of patients self-reported seasonal allergies and 45% subjects self-reported no seasonal allergies. As seen in the graph on the left, there was no difference between the two groups in the percent of patients with severe exacerbations. The average percent of patients experiencing severe exacerbations over five years was 29.3% in patients reporting seasonal allergies versus 29.5% for patients reporting no allergies. Similarly, there was also no difference in the percent of patients experiencing emergency room visits, asthma symptoms, and hospitalizations over five years based on patients' self-reported allergy status. While the main purpose of the AIR2 extension study was to assess long-term five-year durability and safety in a cohort of patients who were treated with bronchial thermoplasty, one limitation of this study is the lack of a sham control group beyond one year. This is not different from other long-term studies of therapies for severe asthma. Collecting meaningful 
five-year dat data without confounding the data results would have required maintaining the study blind for the entire five-year period in both the BT treatment and sham groups. This was felt to be unethical for this study population. On the other hand, maintaining sham patients in the follow-up study after breaking the blind and requiring them to continue the same asthma treatment regimen despite poor control was deemed neither ethical nor practical. This would likely result in poor patient retention, thus leading to further difficulty in interpretation of study results due to missing data. Because of these concerns, the sham group was exited from the study at the end of year one and was not followed out to five years in the long-term extension study. While comparison to historical controls has not been possible due to the lack of long-term studies with greater than one year follow-up of patients with severe asthma on current standard of care therapy, one potential approach to address this in the air to extension study was to compare the outcomes of the BT treated patients who improved after the procedure called the BT responders having an AQLQ score improvement of equal to or greater than 0 0.5 versus the BT treated patients who did not improve. That was the 20% non-responders who had an AQLQ score improvement that was less than 0 0.5. The analysis of the data for BT responders and non-responders following bronchothomplasty treatment provides insight into the subsequent course of these two groups and is consistent with previously published literature suggesting that AQLQ is linked with healthcare utilization. Over the five years of follow-up, severe exacerbation rates, respiratory adverse event rates, asthma multiple symptom adverse event rates, and rates of ER visits and hospitalizations for respiratory symptoms remained higher in the non-responders compared to the, to the responders. Uh, these two graphs show the severe exacerbation rates and emergency room uh, visit rates, uh, red bars being the non-responders and the blue bars being the responders. The data for severe exacerbations and ER visits are shown on this slide. In conclusion, the clinical results from both the AIR-2 trial and the AIR-2 extension study have important clinical implications for the treatment of patients with severe asthma. Different from medication, BT is a single treatment comprising of three procedures that provides long-term benefit that lasts for years, not just hours. With the long-term safety and effectiveness demonstrated, BT should be considered for your patients who are 18 years and older, who are on inhaled corticosteroids and long-acting beta agonists, and are not well controlled at step five or six of the NAEPP asthma guidelines. For these severe asthma patients, BT is an important addition to our treatment armamentarium when standard of care medications aren't working. 